Whenever we are working with right angle triangles, we normally use Sokotwa or we could use something like your Pythagoras to solve the lengths of individual sides. But what happens when you're working with scaling triangles? How exactly do we find the angles or how do we find the lengths of each of those sides of your triangle? Now we do that by the concept of sine rule, cos rule, and area rule. This video is going to focus on how that works. To kick things off, let us start with sine rule. Now with sine rule, there are two ways in which your triangle has to look for you to use sine rule. And we're going to talk about that just now. Okay, so let us talk about sine rule. Sine rule is the first way in which you resolve triangles, in which you find angles or you find sines of triangles. So if I have, let's look at an example like this. I have an example with this triangle over here. Let's say the angles are A, B, and C. Now we normally say that, if, that the side in which faces each of the angle gives you the small letter of the angle that you have. So meaning that I would have this as C, this is B, and this is A. Now what sine rule tells us is it could also be rewritten as a reciprocal. The next thing that we need to figure out here is how do we apply this our sine rule? In which sort of questions are we expected to use sine rule? So the first way to use sine rule is when you have questions that there is two angles and one side, then sine rule can definitely be applied. Now for us to do that, we have to have a side and an angle pair. Now currently we do not have one, but we can create one by figuring out what this angle A is. So that's what we start with. So angle A is equals to we do this because of interior angles of a triangle add up to 180. So that is 65 degrees. Now we can now use the formulas of sine rule, which says that. Yeah, so now since we are trying to get B, that's why we have sine B over B. And the pair that we have is sine A over A. So we just substitute. Then by cross multiplying, So therefore, B would be 12,79 units. Okay, so that's it. The second type of questions in which we use sine rule are questions whereby you have two sides and an angle. And one thing very special about this angle is that the angle must be facing one of the sides. Right? You must have one side angle pair for this to work. So in that case, then you can solve this question. So now this, as you can see, is our pair. So we can start with that. We're going to have the second pair we're trying to figure out is this one over here, which is 13 and angle F. So we'll write it in such a way that it is. Then we'll cross multiply this to solve. And that would be your answer for sine f. But that's not what we're asked to find. We're asked to find angle f. So to get angle f, we will use the second function of sine, meaning we'll move sine over to the other side. And in your calculator, you put sheet sine, then you substitute this answer over there. And your final answer would be, and that's it, 52,26 degrees. The two ways in which we talked about to solve sine rule the first one is having two angles and a side, and the second one is having two sides and an angle where the angle and one of the sides has to be opposite to each other. Now, with a better understanding of sine rule, let's move on to cos rule. Now, the concept of cos rule is you normally have an included angle. You'll be seeing 
I will be talking about what an included angle means up next. So next up, we'll be talking about cost rule. Now, the cost rule starts with a triangle, like we talked about. Just like the previous one, we're still going to use our same A, B, C, and that is also A, that is small b, and that is small c. The formula for cost rule says that Now, these are the six different types of formulas for cost rule. Now, you will use any one of them depending on the sort of questions you get that you have to use cost rule. Now, if you are trying to get a site, you will definitely use one of these three. And if you're trying to get an angle, then you can use one of these three that you have over here. We normally use cost rule whenever you have an, an included angle. An included angle means you have two sides and an angle in between those two sides. Just like in this case, we have side 10 and side 15, and we have an angle 60 in between 10 and 15. Now, this is a classic case of how to use cost rule. So for this here, you will use the formula. So the formula here would be so think about it this here is your a that is your b and that there is your c substituted so each and every one of them into your formula so the length of the side a would be 13 comma 2 3 and that's exactly how you can use cost rule to answer questions. As I said, it has to be an included angle, two sides with an angle in between them. Another way in which you can use cost rule is if you have three sides with no angles given and you're trying to get any of the angles, then you can use cost rule. To answer this, we understand that this here will be small e, this would be f, and that there would be g. The formula we use for this is we're trying to get e cos e, it's going to be, so all we just need to do is substitute. So you get cos E is 0, 0,116 and so on. So to actually get E, we'll put the second function of cos and that will give you 83, 34 degrees and that will be your answer. You use cost rules whenever you have three sides given with no angles or you have two sides and, and an included angle. And that is cost rule. Now that you understand the concept of cost rule, let's move on to area rule. Now area rule, we use it when we do not know what the perpendicular height is. Remember the formula for area rule is half base times height. So if there's no possibility of you figuring out what the perpendicular height of your triangle is, we normally use area row. So now in terms of area row, we use this to find the area of a triangle. Now from previous grades, you understand the concept of area looks like this, whereby you would have a base, and you have a perpendicular height. And therefore, the area is given as half base times height, where that's your base, and that is your height. Now, with the triangles we are working with in this section, they are all scaling triangles, meaning that none of the sides are equal. So it is difficult for us to get a perpendicular height, or because or in questions, we're not given a perpendicular height. You will need to figure out a different way of calculating your area without actually getting the perpendicular height. So, like the previous stuff we've been working with, this is A, that is B, and that is C. And as usual, C, B, A. So the formula for your area row looks like this.
yeah so this will be your area two sides and an angle in between them now if you have an example like this and they ask you to find what the area of this we're just going to say it is half times 6 times 16 sine of 30 and that will give you 24 but since it is area and we don't have a unit we can just say it is unit squared and that's it now the reason why I talked about your area, your sine rule, your cos rule is because it's important in 2D and 3D trig, which you normally need in your exams. The next video is going to be talking about 2D trig and how it works. So we will be putting all what we learned into an application sort of question. Now, in the description, there are other videos on trig and other sections in maths that you guys can check out. And on your way out, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.